Have you ever found yourself staring at a computer screen, overwhelmed by the sheer amount of visa choices to move to Australia? Well, you're not alone. It can be a challenging decision to see which visa can be the right fit for you. I remember when I was going through the process. I spent countless hours researching and seeking advice from anyone who would give it. Turns out, opinions are like souls. Everyone's got one. Today, we want to help make the process easier for you. We'll be covering the seven best pathways to Australia that you need to know about. So whether you're a student, skilled worker or entrepreneur, we've got you covered. Get ready to sit back, relax, and let us guide you through the most exciting and accessible ways to call Australia your new home in 2023. G'day guys, my name's Ross, and I moved with my family to Australia during a global pandemic. Just to make this clear, I'm not a visa agent. This information, to my knowledge, is correct at the time of me making this, and these are the visa options that we could have taken if we were starting out from fresh, pretty much like you. The working holiday visa is the perfect way for young adventurers to travel and work their way to the land down under. With this visa, you can stay in Australia for up to 12 months and work with each individual employer for up to six months. This gives you the perfect opportunity to fund your travels, and you'll be happy to know that this visa only costs 510 bucks, which is a small price you have to pay for the awesome memories that you're going to make. Not only will you get the opportunity to experience Australia's unique culture and lifestyle, but you'll also have the chance to meet people from all over the world and make lifelong friends. And whether English is your first language or not, you can practice the lingo and gain valuable work experience that might lead you on to your future career. If you want to find a way to extend your stay for another year, then you'll have to complete at least three months of specified work which is normally farm work. Do you like farms? Of course, there are some requirements that you need to meet, like having a valid passport from one of the eligible countries, being aged 18 to 30, or even 35 in some countries. I literally don't know why some countries are allowed to go to 35. They're the lucky ones. You'll have to meet health and character requirements, and you'll also have to have around about $5,000 in savings to prove that you can fund at least the start of your working holiday. But as long as you meet those criteria, you're gonna have a great time. What's even better is that 90% of the applications are processed within 14 days. So you don't have to wait long before you can start planning the rest of your new life. Also, if you're young or perhaps slightly more mature, you could try for a student visa. Subclass 500. Oh my God, there's so many bloody numbers. Australia is one of the best destinations for international students, offering high quality education and a range of courses to choose from. And it's cheaper than if you wanna do it in the UK. Maybe not for international students. With an Australian student visa that costs just 650 bucks, you can study for a diploma, a degree, or even a language course. But you still also have to pay for the course. That bit's not free. The best bit is that you can study full time and then work part time up to 40 hours over two weeks during the semesters. And during the holidays, you can work full time, which is a great way to support yourself. Unless, you know, you've got daddy's money. And if you're one of the mature students, you can even bring your family along too. The validity of your visa will depend on the length of your course. So you don't have to worry about your visa expiring as long as you're studying. Don't stop studying. I wouldn't want to know if they take your visa away. Plus, if you're already in Australia on a tourist visa or a work holiday visa, you can apply for a student visa while you're here, as long as you're from certain countries. Studying in Australia isn't just about getting a world-class education, it's also about experiencing a new culture and making lifelong friends and exploring all that Australia has to offer. Kind of thinking about it, I wish I'd studied in Australia now. Not that I look down upon my education at the University of Reading. Make sure you apply for your student visa in good time, because processing times can vary, but it might lead you on to your fantastic new career. If you're considering more of a temporary stay in Australia, then there are several visa options that can suit your needs. And if you're keen to work in Australia, then the Australian Business Sponsorship Visa, or TSS Visa Subclass 482, sounds like some kind of code language, might be right up your alley. These cost between $1,330 and $2,770, depending on the length of your visa, which can be two to four years. The visas allow you to stay and work in Australia for as long as you've got the job. Plus, if you've got dependent family members, then they could be added onto your visa too. The Australian Business Sponsorship Visa is available for hundreds of different eligible occupations. God, that was difficult to say. So whether you're a trade professional, computing professional, engineer, nurse, doctor, teacher, accountant, mate, there's loads of different jobs. If you're one of them, then you're probably eligible to apply. To apply for the visa, you're going to need to have a job offer from an Australian company who's willing to sponsor you through the process. You'll also need to meet the criteria set for your occupation and the relevant amount of work experience. You might even need to sit an English test. But the best part is it can be pretty quick. Around five months or less, to process your application. Now, if you've got qualifications and experience in a profession that's really in demand in Australia, 
this could be your best way to call Australia your new home. Skilled visas are points tested and take into consideration different factors like your age, work experience, qualifications, English tests and more to determine if you qualify. There are a few different types of skilled visas, most notably the 189 and the 190. We've got a 189. Each has its own specific requirements such as being a profession that's on the skills list, being under 45, passing an English test and how well you do it, and also having your skills assessed. But the benefits include the fact that they're normally a more permanent option and include permanent residency. They cost $4,240 and can range from three months to process to 36 months. As like some of the other visas, obviously you can bring along your dependent family. And they'll also be entitled to permanent residency in Australia. Your partner or spouse will have full working rights and your children can attend school without having to pay overseas fees. And you get childcare subsidy as well, if they're really little. Plus if you're granted a skilled migration visa, after four years you'll be eligible for citizenship and then they'll make you vote. But it's okay because when you vote you can have a sausage and bread. The process of obtaining a skilled migration visa can sometimes be a little bit complicated. As they include things like the skills assessments and for the 190 it can also involve state nominations. There are a fair few stages that you've got to go through but it'll be all worth it in the end. Another option available to you could be the employer nomination scheme or visa subclass 186. Basically the employer nomination scheme is a visa that allows you to become a permanent resident of Australia via a job offer from an Australian company and like the other ones you can also include your family members. They cost the same as the skilled visas but generally speaking can be processed in far less time from 4 to 13 months. To be eligible for this visa you need to have a job offer for two years from an Australian employer who is willing to nominate you. Normally have the three years work experience in your profession. The occupation that you're working in must also be in the employer nomination scheme list. But don't worry, there's a labour shortage at the moment, so there are lots of jobs within those categories. If you're now thinking that one of those visas might be for you, but you're not sure where to start or even if you could be eligible, then speak to our friends at True Blue Migration Services. They're one of Australia's oldest, largest and most trusted group of MARA registered agents who have helped thousands of people to realise their dreams of living down under. Don't believe us? then check out the hundreds of positive reviews on Google. The best part, mention us and you'll receive a free, no obligation visa assessment, where they will tell you your best options for moving to Australia. I guess it kind of defeats the purpose of this video. You should probably just contact them now and let them tell you the rest. I mean, don't, please just watch to the end and then contact them. If you dream of the more regional Aussie lifestyle, then you could try one of the several skilled regional work visas, including the 491, 494 and 191 visas. These visas are designed to encourage skilled workers to live and work in the more regional areas of Australia. Some are points tested like the 491 or require an offer of employment like the 494. The permanent residence visa subclass 191 is for skilled workers who have lived in regional Australia on a temporary visa for at least three years. This visa has been available since last November and is designed to help regional areas retain their skilled workers. Costs are the same as the other visas at $4,240 and weirdly they can take up to 42 months to process. But I guess their availability proves that there really is a visa for everyone. And you never really know which one might be appropriate for you. What about if you find love in Australia? Well, you might be able to apply for a de facto visa subclass 820, which is temporary and then can lead to an 801, which is the more permanent option and the one that can allow you and your partner a new life in Australia. Oh, how romantic. To prove that you're the real deal, you'll obviously have to provide evidence of your relationship. This includes showing that you've lived together for at least a year if you're not married or only six months if you are. Maybe it's worth putting a ring on it. The cost of finding love, however, can be a bit steep. $8,085 can seem a lot, but can you really put a price on love? Well, if you're Australian, it turns out that you can, and it's $8,085. The great thing about the de facto visas is that they can be submitted both inside and outside of Australia. Remember, if you need help with your visa or deciding what your best options are, then speak to our friends at True Blue Migration Services. Mention us and get your free, no obligation visa assessment. And if you want to know what your options are or whether your job is in demand when you get here, then make sure to watch this video. Catch you later.